Good morning. Welcome to Anchors for Life. We're glad that you're with us today. We have been going through the expressions the Lord Jesus used at the cross, uh, from the cross, the seven sayings of the Lord Jesus or the seven cries the Lord Jesus uh, uses from the cross. It's an amazing thing to stop and and uh, to contemplate the fact that the Lord Jesus used what precious breath he had while he was hanging between uh, heaven and earth, between a holy and righteous God and sinful men, to in the anguish that he was suffering physically, that he would use his breath to be uh, to make these seven statements that are so powerful. We first saw the the first statement. Uh, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And we saw that as a, as a um, expression of forgiveness or expression of pardon, a cry of pardon. And uh, how wonderful to, to be reminded that that's why the Lord Jesus was there upon the cross. The second expression was one of salvation or assurance to the thief on the cross. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And the third expression was one of compassion and care toward his mother when he would say to her, Woman, behold thy son, uh, speaking of John, and, and then to John saying, Behold thy mother, making sure that she was well taken care of in his absence. And then the fourth one, when the Lord Jesus would cry, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? is a cry of anguish and, and indeed a, a cry of atonement. And, uh, and then the next one is a cry of suffering. I thirst when the Lord Jesus would make that declaration in John chapter 19. The sixth cry was a, a, a cry of victory when the Lord Jesus could say, it is finished and the work of our salvation was accomplished. But then today we want to look at the seventh saying from the cross and it is a saying of finality it is a saying of submission and and we want to see this here as we look in luke chapter 23 so turn in your bibles if you have them luke 23 and we want to look at verse 46 and i'd just like to read the the verses surrounding uh this in luke chapter 23 verses starting at verse 44 where we read and now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And Jesus cried with, uh, out with a loud voice, saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now, we want to see several things concerning the death of the Lord Jesus Christ and him breathing his last and, and being able to say, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. When we see this here, um, we saw in John 19, verse 33, when the soldiers uh, went to speed up the process of death, they would break the legs of, and they went and broke the legs of one thief and then broke the legs of the other thief. But when they came to the Lord Jesus Christ, they saw that he was already dead, that he had already died. And this is really important because this underlines that he actually died. And we, we want to just emphasize that because there are some that says that would, would say an argument against his his resurrection, that he didn't really die, that he only had passed out. But what we find here is that these soldiers knew that he had died and they did not break his legs. In Mark 15, verse 44, we read there that Pilate marveled that Jesus had already died. Pilate, it, the official Roman stance on the death of the Lord Jesus was indeed that he had died. And so... How good. You know, we remember John chapter 10, right? In verse 18, where it, the Lord Jesus would say uh, that no one could take his life from me. He had power to lay it down. He had power to take it up again. This commandment he had received from his father. 
And so we see that, number one, the Lord Jesus actually died. But then we see something else very unique and, and that he died with confidence. Uh, when we listen to our verse, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. We hear such confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's confidence and it's security that, that's in this expression. At the beginning of his life, at the age of 12, the Lord Jesus could say, Do you not know that it ought to be about my father's business? And now here at the end of his life, he could say with confidence that, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He had been, for his entire life, he had been about his father's business. And now in his death, he's also about his father's business. And he could say with such confidence, into thy hands I commend my spirit. But we might ask the question, what was the source of his confidence? What was the source of the confidence of the Lord Jesus Christ that he could say into thy hands I commend my spirit I would say number one the father's presence you know three times he addresses the Lord the, the father he addresses God three times upon the cross twice as father and once as God when the Lord Jesus said father forgive them for they know not what they do and now that was the first statement. And now the very last statement, the Lord Jesus says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And the statement in the middle is indeed that statement where he says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You know, this, this expression, Father, was such a, a, a important and, and, and so dear to the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when we look in the Sermon on the Mount, we see that the Lord Jesus mentions this in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. He uses this term Father about 15 times. In the Upper Room Discord, John 13 to 17, we find that the Lord Jesus uses this expression uh, Father about 53 times. So over and over again, there was an, a constant where, awareness of the presence of the Father in the life of the Lord Jesus. And his relationship with the Father was very dear to him. And, and, and then secondly, not only was the Father's presence a source of confidence for him, but I would also suggest the Father's promise. And this is very important because in Psalm 31, Psalm 31, verse 5, uh, we read this. Let me just read that verse. Psalm 31 and verse 5, we read this. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O God, of truth. Now, this is the psalmist. This is David saying this. But the Lord Jesus uses this verse. He changes a few things. He leaves out, you have redeemed me, O God of truth. And he says, into your hand I commit my spirit. And, and he changes into your hand to Father, I commit my spirit into your hands. And, but we see that this promise, he takes this verse as a promise to himself. You know, when the Lord Jesus would say, um, when he addressed God, and he would say in the, in, uh, uh, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was actually applying Isaiah 53, verse 12. When he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was actually applying Psalm 22, verse 1, uh, to, his, to, to his situation. And now here, he takes this promise of David and he applies it to his own life, his own situation. And when we think about this, the Lord Jesus, while when the Lord Jesus was dying, when the Lord Jesus breathed his last, he was meditating on Scripture. Now, I find that very significant because he was fulfilling Scripture, but he was also meditating on Scripture. It's very significant. And when we look at this, we see the Father's presence 
gave him confidence. The father's promise gave him confidence. And then thirdly, the promise, the, the father's protection gave the Lord Jesus confidence. Into your hands I commend my spirit. He knew that the father's hands were about his life, that his life was in the hands of the father. Even though we could see in Matthew chapter 26, the Lord Jesus predicted that he would be betrayed into the hands of sinners. We think of what those sinners did. We think of the hands of the sinners who stripped his, his clothing off of him and the hands of the sinners that flogged his back, the hands of the sinners that took their fist and, and would hit him in the face, and, and the hands of the sinners that would take a rod and beat it onto his head with a crown of thorns pressing into his brow. Yes, we think of the, the, that he was being betrayed into the hands of sinners. But, but dear friend, the whole time he was into the hands. He knew that he was in the hands of God, the Father. And he says, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. He had total confidence in the Father's protection. That's tremendous. And then fourthly, the this entire experience that the Lord Jesus had gone through, his entire crucifixion. He was in the hands of the Father's providence. So we have the Father's presence, the Father's promise, the Father's protection, and the Father's pr providence, meaning that he, he was in God's under God's complete control the entire time. It's striking to see that, that according to John chapter 18, verse 28, that the time of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus was the time of the Passover lamb. John the Baptist could stand on the, on the banks of the Jordan River and say, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And here the Lord Jesus was being crucified on the same day that the lambs for the Passover were being slaughtered. And you know, when we think of this... Um, he knew uh, Pilate, and he could say to Pilate, he, he, he would say to Pilate, you have no authority over me unless it had been given to you from above. And so the Lord Jesus knew that, that he was operating on a perfect timetable, on God's timetable, that everything was in the sovereign hand of God. And so he was under the Father's providence. So when we see that, the Lord Jesus, yes, he died actually, and he died confidently. And then thirdly, he died willingly. Again, I, I mentioned those verses in John chapter, seven, uh, John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18, that he says, no man takes my life from me. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again. This I have received from my Father. We think of this. It's a tremendous thing to see that he died willingly. He didn't, his life was not taken from him. He laid down his life. He laid it down voluntarily. Yes, it was, it was for us. It was in our place. But it was his desire to lay down his life because that's why he came. He gave his life a ransom for us he gave his life as a substitute for us he who knew no sin was made sin for us in our place and so he died willingly but not only can we say that he actually died and he died confidently and he died willingly but lastly he died victoriously we need to see that the death of the Lord Jesus Christ was a victorious death. I want to just mention that it says now about the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the earth and until the ninth hour, and then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. Now let me just read that again from Matthew's account. In Matthew chapter 27, we see a little bit more detail about this, in starting at verse 51. It says, And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. Now that's important, from the top to the bottom. 
If man was going to tear it, they would have tore it from the bottom to the top. But God is the one who tore it from the top to the bottom. And so we see that the, and the earth quaked and the rocks were split and the graves were open and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to them. Now, I, I want to emphasize three little things here when we think about this. The, the first thing is that, yes, it was torn. The veil was torn from the top to the bottom, as I've said, and allowing us uh, in access into the very presence of God, into the holiest of holies. That veil had been torn from the top to the bottom, and now and it allows us access and this is what we read in the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 10, we read this. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest of holies by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. So what we see here is that now we have access into the very presence of God because of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, it was a victorious death. But secondly, we also see something else was open. Not only was the way into the presence of God open by the veil being torn from the top to the bottom, but secondly, we see that the graves were open and the and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And this just reminds us, these two things remind us of the victory over sin that separates us from God and over death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. How wonderful to see the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ won at Calvary when the Lord Jesus could say, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Total victory. And so when we look at this, we see that the Lord Jesus Christ actually died. He died confidently. He died willingly. And he died victoriously. And so this is the last of the seven sayings of the Lord Jesus. We're going to have at least one more um, one more session on the effects of the cross. These seven sayings ought to have a sound effect on our lives. And we want to look at that next time. But this time, I just want to encourage us to be reminded of the victory that was won at Calvary's cross. And when the Lord Jesus Christ could say, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. May the Lord bless you today and may you be encouraged and may you walk in the victory that has been brought through the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary.